Shalom, Dr. Mishka Ben David. Thank you for joining us on Info Live TV today. Shalom, Margot. My pleasure. Uh, Mishka, you're, I can call you Mishka. Uh, you're not only a well known author of uh, a number of best selling novels that we'll touch on later in the interview, but you're also a former senior member of the Mossad. And you've agreed to talk with us about the assassination of uh, Hezbollah commander Imad Mania in uh, Damascus Tuesday night. Yes, definitely, under the restrictions of uh, what I'm allowed to say. Uh, it's fully understandable. Yeah. Uh, firstly, who was the man, Imad Mounia? Um Could we refer to him as a ticking bomb? Yeah, definitely so. Uh, Imad Mounia was uh, one of the founders of uh, the Hezbollah. Uh, before that, he was the bodyguard of Yasser Arafat, but after the first Lebanon war in 82, when the Fatah movement left uh, Lebanon, he stayed there and uh, with the other people uh, actually formed the Hezbollah. He uh, always uh, undertook uh, military positions and uh, activities of uh, terror. He uh, firstly was known as uh, the head of the uh, overseas operations uh, of the Hezbollah and uh, became uh, worldly known by a number of uh, operations, of terror uh, operations, uh, which he executed against the American Marine soldiers, where they had about uh, 200 casualties and about uh, 100 French soldiers that were killed, uh, the kidnapping of a TWA uh, plane, and uh, then a series of uh, terror acts against uh, Israelis. Uh, after uh, Israel had uh, killed the former um, uh, chief of Hezbollah, uh, Abbas Musawi, uh, he was, um, uh, Mouania was the one that carried out the two attacks in 92 and in 94 on the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires and on the um, uh, Jewish uh, community, uh, community center. center there with uh, um, about 84 uh, killed uh, people, and uh, then a series of uh, other attacks in South Lebanon on uh, Israeli soldiers, and um, etc. And it definitely was a ticking bomb because uh, as he moved uh, up the ranks, he became uh, the number two after Nasrallah in charge of uh, all the military activities of uh, Hezbollah, which included the firing rockets on the north of Israel and the kidnapping of the soldiers, and uh, the guy uh, never so, uh, sat still, uh, had a very creative mind, and uh, was uh, on the run of executing uh, new terror attacks all the time. Mm -hmm. and what kind of life would a person like that have led? I mean, he was on Israel and the U.S.'s uh, top uh, wanted list for over a decade, and uh, he <coughs> changed identities. There are reports that he underwent uh, plastic surgery. What sort of life would a person like him have led? Um, he definitely uh, had to be uh, undercover all the time. Uh, probably did not use uh, telephones and cellular phones. Uh, did not let anybody know where he is. Uh, had uh, different uh, locations, different apartments. I don't know for sure of all that, but uh, I do assume that uh, this was the kind of life that, uh, that he carried on. We know that uh, in addition to living in uh, Beirut, he had an apartment in uh, Damascus, uh, probably more than one, which is where uh, finally the hand that got it, whether it was the Mossad or not the Mossad, uh, found him, uh, probably switched cars, uh, lived uh, an underground life uh, for sure. Uh, now, although Israel has uh, strongly denied any involvement in his assassination, the method used to kill him, I mean, what does this tell us about the capabilities of the organization that carried it out? It tells us that uh, whoever carried this out uh, had uh, tremendous uh, intelligence capabilities and tremendous capabilities of uh, executing uh, an, an action, a military action. Because to, um, to reach a person like him and to, to be able to carry out such an, an operation on him, one needed to know at a certain day, at a certain time, where the guy will be, in which car, in what department, um, etc. Now, to be able to have uh, such an intelligence, it means uh, to deeply penetrate the Hezbollah, either by um, a guy that uh, was recruited and became an agent, 
and, and reported on, uh, on Imad Mu'ania, and because of the st style of life that Imad Mu'ania carried out, it had to be someone from the very, very close circle of him. Or by other means, uh, for example, very sophisticated uh, listening devices and means that, uh, that could locate him, um, probably surveillance uh, from the air, uh, and uh, I would also assume that once uh, some information was gathered and people knew where to start looking for him, then there were uh, what we call uh, combatants, which whether if it was the Mossad, then Israeli guys, if it was the CIA, then American guys, that would uh, go undercover to, where, uh, to the areas where he lived, uh, go around, learn the area, see the car, uh, plan how to plant a bomb in the car and then do it. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of uh, sophistication uh, and a lot of courage too. Mm -hmm. Now the Mossad obviously had the capabilities to carry out such an operation, but how long would such an operation take to plan? Uh, it, it really depends uh, when does the information come in. Once the information is complete, I think that the, the operation itself could take a matter of days, uh, weeks the most. Uh, but to gather the information uh, may take much, much longer, especially in a case of a person like uh, Muania that is uh, on the run and, uh, and hiding all the time. I think that in his case, it was the accumulation of a very, very long uh, intelligence effort that lasted probably uh, months, if not years, uh, just the recruitment of a person from his inner circle, if that was one of the uh, leads, uh, could take uh, a few years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, obviously, uh, among the thousands or at least hundreds of operations carried out either by the Mossad or other intelligence networks from abroad, um, operations can go wrong. And uh, I remember uh, an attempt by the Mossad to uh, target Khaled Mashal in Jordan. And if I'm not wrong, you were a member or involved in that specific operation. Uh, what happened? Or if, if you could use it as an example of something mm. that went wrong. <laughs> I will use it as, uh, as, a, as example both of something that went right and something that went wrong. Okay. Um, Israel and the Mossad was not allowed uh, to operate in Jordan and uh, not even to uh, collect information about Jordan from the time of the peace treaty that was signed by uh, Prime Minister Rabin uh, and uh, by King Hussein. Hussein. So actually we knew nothing about uh, the Hamas whereabouts in Jordan. After the two uh, bombs, uh, assassination bombs in Jerusalem, that took place uh, about two months apart from each other um, in Ben Yehuda and in the market, and uh, took a toll of uh, dozens of uh, dead lives. People, lives. Mm -hmm. um, we, we were ordered to, uh, to find the heads of the Hamas in Jordan. And uh, so firstly, it was starting from the scratch, from zero, and uh, within a couple of weeks of uh, hard work, we knew everything. We knew uh, where Mashal and where the other uh, top members of the Hamas live, what cars do they have, where do they work, uh, their uh, routine, etc. We were ready for an operation. Now, the operation could be easy and successful. Uh, was the Prime Minister then, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, willing to take the risk of uh, endangering the relations with Jordan and either put a bomb in his car or uh, shoot him, mm -hmm. and then this this is a, this is a kind of operation that Mossad knows how to carry out, and uh, we also said that this is what we can do. Um, Netanyahu's uh, will, and I think that it's a very legitimate one by a prime minister, was that uh, Marshall will be dead without uh, anyone knowing that he was killed altogether. Uh, this involved. Uh, um, actually touching him mm -hmm. and, uh, and and it meant that the um, the combatants around him were unarmed uh, this was not a kind of operation that the Mossad carried out before the combatants didn't know how to do it 
and uh, the result was uh, a big mess mm -hmm. that ended up uh, very wrong. Everything that Netanyahu didn't want to happen did happened, happened mm -hmm. uh, including se severing the ties with uh, with Jordan, uh, etc. But uh, this is a risk that the uh, prime minister uh, can and should take, and uh, this is an, uh, a misfortune that can happen in a, in an operation. It does show, however. Uh, again, of uh, the capabilities of the Mossad. I uh, remember uh, author Meir Shalev writing in the paper uh, after the committee of uh, inquiry that said that, uh, that uh, we, uh, we did not think enough, we were not creative enough. He said, if uh, going to an uh, Arab capital, finding an arch-terrorist and uh, putting uh, something in his ear mm -hmm. is not creative enough, I don't know what creativity is. Um, anyway, yeah, this went wrong, and uh, and many other operations went well, including operations that uh, Israel never took uh, responsibility. responsibility on, and that were um, not not less uh, complicated. Uh, we we remember another operation that whether the Mossad did it or not is uh, is another issue, but of um, uh, eliminating the head of the Islamic Jihad, the Fath Shkaki in Malta, when he was uh, um, with a wig and with glasses and under another name, and on his way uh, from uh, Syria to Libya and back. And still in that very short time that it was on the route, uh, whoever did it uh, managed, managed to it. catch up with him and to eliminate mm -hmm. him. So the capabilities are there, and the, the risks, the huge risks, are there too. Tell me, how do you think the uh, assassination, Tuesday's assassination, will affect the Hezbollah? The fact that uh, whoever was responsible succeeded in uh, reaching the top ranks of Hezbollah, in other words, the one under Nasrallah. Do you think that will have any effect on the movement? I think it um, it should and must and will have an effect, but it will have uh, two reverse effects. Mm -hmm. um, the first one will be, as far as Israel is concerned, the first one will probably be that uh, they will want to take a revenge. Uh, Monia had uh, a deputy, uh, Talal Hamia, for many years. Uh, Probably he or somebody else was already nominated to the job and will want to prove that he, uh, he can also uh, um, carry out operations like Moania. Also, the Hezbollah is a movement. Once they named Israel responsible, and it doesn't matter if Israel is responsible or, or not, not to that effect, because they have named Israel uh, as the one responsible for it, uh, they will want to take a revenge. It may take couple of months like it took in 92 uh, before right. blowing up the Israeli embassy. They have the entire world that they can operate. We cannot, we are on the defensive now, we cannot uh, uh, make sure that they cannot carry out uh, an well, operation like this again. In many countries. They have networks in many countries. There are Muslim, uh, fundamental Muslim communities in many, many countries that they can operate uh, from. Uh, this is in the short term. In the long term, I think that uh, Nasrallah knows very well now that uh, whoever got to uh, Muania can get to him. him. They know that they are uh, penetratable. I don't know if that's a word in English. But you can, but, well, they know but, they've been infiltrated, <laughs> yeah, let's yes. say. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, will, it must have an effect on them. We saw in uh, different cases in the past when we uh, eliminated the... Uh, uh, top members of the Hamas, that it had an effect, uh, and it will have an effect on Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a very bitter enemy and a very cruel enemy, but uh, Hezbollah is not irrational. Mm -hmm. They are not crazy. They have a goal and they have certain means, but they take into consideration uh, what uh, the other side is doing. And uh, they know now for quite for sure that we can penetrate them, we or the CIA or whoever did that, uh, and, uh, and it will have to uh, moderate them. How about Syria and Iran? I mean, they condemned, obviously, the assassination, but, and we know that uh, Iran is funding Hezbollah <coughs> with arms as well as funds, the same with Syria. How do you think that mm -hmm. will affect uh, 
Uh, Syria will definitely be affected because the operation or the results of the operation the took place in Damascus. It doesn't mean that the bomb was planted in Damascus because uh, Mwania was going back and forth mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Beirut to Damascus. But uh, it's not the first operation in Damascus in the last year that we don't know who... Uh, uh, was who was responsible for it, and not the first operation in Beirut that we don't know who was responsible for. Uh, and they know that uh, if uh, whoever reached the Muania in Damascus could reach uh, Khaled Mashal in Damascus and everybody else. Uh, so they must take it into consideration. The Iran is a completely uh, different uh, story. I, I don't know how the Iranians would react. Uh, the Iranians are... Uh, uh, much more, much harder to predict because they, not as a country, but as a, a country that operates uh, terror organizations, uh, can do many things that uh, no, so-called normal countries would, would not, not allow them, themselves to do. Mishka, I'd like to turn now to the other side, uh, your novels, and obviously six years ago you wrote Duet in Beirut, which has so far only been published in uh, Hebrew. And uh, actually, it talks about a very similar operation in Beirut vis-à-vis -vis Damascus. Um, yes. Perhaps you could... Uh... <clears throat> yes. Uh, in, in this book, in uh, Duet in Beirut, I uh, describe... Uh, it's, it's a novel, a suspense novel. I describe a situation that the Mossad is um, going to Beirut to assassinate the head of the operations, of the overseas operations of the Hezbollah, namely Imad Mounia. I did not uh, name him uh, Imad Mounia, I just took a fictionary name, but uh, the, the, the title is his title, and I describe how the Mossad gets there, how they find him, how they try to kill him. The plot of the book is that um, in the first um, attempt they fail. The guy that was supposed to shoot him doesn't shoot because there is a little girl there. And uh, they, they come back, the, the team comes back, and that guy is being uh, expelled from the Mossad. And then after um, additional terrorist activities of uh, that same guy, um, the, the, the Hezbollah guy, and then the, the Israeli combatant goes by himself to Beirut to complete the mission uh, by putting a bomb under his car. And I, again, I uh, uh, describe in details how he finds the guy, how he finds the car, how he assembles the, the, um, the bomb, the bomb. Uh, gets under the car, puts it there. And uh, by a uh, turn of history, uh, six years later, it happened. I, I believe that it happened uh, quite similarly to the way that uh, I described it in, so in, in the book. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When do you think our viewers will be able to read the English version, or when will it be translated into English? The book was translated into okay. English. Uh, right now, uh, I have a person in New York that conducts uh, uh, negotiations with uh, some uh, literary agents and uh, some publishers. Um, also, uh, there was a, a, a producer uh, in Hollywood that... Uh, a film producer. A film producer, an ex-Israeli that lives in Hollywood that happened to buy the book uh, at the airport, read it on his way uh, to New York, and uh, contacted me and, and um, bought an option uh, to produce the book. Uh, the option uh, um, to produce a film. The the option that the producer right. bought, uh, the the term uh, finished. Uh, he did not produce the movie, uh, so uh, my person in New York is uh, trying also to sell the rights. Uh, I do hope that uh, it will happen. And there's another novel on the way, isn't there? Yes, uh, I have another uh, couple of novels that I'm uh, trying to translate, which is, are also uh, suspense novels about uh, the Mossad, and, and another one uh, that I wrote uh, now that uh, uh, this one happens in uh, St. Petersburg in, in Russia. It's a love story between a Mossad agent and uh, uh, a Russian woman that turns out to be a spy catcher of the KGB or the FSB, mm -hmm. which, which is the, the name uh, now of the new KGB, uh, which I hope uh, will be translated, uh, will come out uh, shortly in Hebrew. The, the one before that I'm also working on is named um, uh, Encounters in Berlin. It talks about uh, uh, 
the Mossad the official representative in Berlin, who is a second generation of Holocaust survivors, and uh, he gets a message that he has to convey to the Germans about a group of Israelis that is there to execute uh, a, a terror attack against uh, neo-Nazis, and he is unable to uh, to hand over Israelis to the Germans, and from that point on, uh, the plot... Uh, Thickens and develops. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, definitely fascinating reading, and hopefully it won't be long before the books will be in English on the bookshelves, and who knows, maybe a movie. I Thank you so. very much for joining us today, Mr. Ben David. Thank you too, Margot.